welcome I am Fabi and today I want to talk about astral cities I want to share with you my own experience when I do astral projection mental projection that I go to astral hospitals okay the reason I want to share my experiences is because I have since 2018 visit this astral hospital and work it with this egregore but only recently in 2022 i read this book from a medium called halu gamash she is a brazilian medium and in this book she unfortunately she didn't translate to english yet but in this book she talks about her experiences when going in astral projections to different stages of the astral city stages that i have never been okay but in the stages that i've been she is talking about my own experiences she is talking about things that i resonate because i had the experience you know so it's really i think important to understand a little bit more how the astral realm works and by sharing my experiences and things from this book I think I will help you to understand, okay? So to start, we have planet Earth, right? And then the lower astral realm, the middle astral realm, and the upper astral realm, okay? The lower astral realm is where souls that don't have a very good frequency, they are really low frequency, stay people that have disincarnated, okay? Souls that have disincarnated and have committed crimes and are really bad people and people that just don't want to work for the good or do any good or things like this. They are in the lower astral realms. In the middle astral realms, you will find people that have disincarnated, but they are just normal people. People that have an attachment to the material things, an attachment to the family. They don't want to let go. They don't want to go up to the upper astral realms with their mentors, okay? So they are there in the middle astral realms. And in the upper, you have the astral cities, the astral hospitals. This thing about astral cities and astral hospitals started about 5,000 years ago, okay? Our Lord Jesus, in his true essence, Sananda, he watches over our planet, right? So he saw that the souls were disincarnating from earth and they were trapped in the lower and middle astral realms. And they have asked uh, the light workers, the mentors, help to make these astral cities and transitory places where the mentor could go down and try to talk to the soul and guide the soul up to the upper astral realms, okay? To get help and continue their path, okay? So, um, it started about 5,000 years ago and 2,000 years ago is where it developed further, I would say. So, in the lower astral realm, again, you have the souls that have a really bad frequency. In the middle astral realm, in between them, you will have a transitory place. A transitory place is where souls that are really low in frequency and bad, committed bad things, where the mentor talks to them and they go to these transitory places in the middle of the realm to decide if they want to stay there, if they want to go up or if they want to come down again. Okay, so there is these transitory places, meaning transit, because they haven't decided yet what they want to do. So it, it, it's a place where they can try to guide the soul to go up okay but the mentor will never oblige anyone to do anything unless unless this is a compulsory incarnation okay but that's another thing so the mentor will try to help these souls from the lower astral realm into this transitory place now 
We have the very first stage of the astral cities are the hospitals, okay? We have different astral cities uh, around the globe, it's not only one, okay? And the hospitals will receive the souls that have disincarnated and they are, because when you disincarnate, you're kind of in a shock, okay? So it takes a while for the soul to to understand what happened and to be calm and to let go of the traumas and this kind of stuff. So the hospital helps the soul, but then they allow the soul to decide, do they want to go to, to the middle astral realm? Do they want to stay there in the astral city? It's for them to decide, but they help. And also people that are incarnated can visit the astral cities and the astral hospitals. Of course, we cannot go to all the stages, okay? Because we have uh, a lot of material energy, denser energy, and there are a lot of stages that we cannot go because it's a very um, subtle energy. It's softer energy, it's lighter energy, okay? So we are not compatible, I would say. But the first stages of the astral city, you will find the hospital, you will find temples, okay? Because there are people that disincarnate, but they want, they feel the need to keep their faith, to keep their religion. So you will find different temples. You will find a lot of nature and rivers and gardens for people to exchange energy with the nature and heal. And then you have all the stages that I will talk maybe in another video, okay? Because otherwise it's going to be too long. But let me share my experience about the astral hospitals. Back in 2018, um, I decided to stop being afraid of spirit, okay? And study. And then I do my courses and I decided to create an astral temple, a place that I go to in the astral realm that has my energy, is like my little house there. And I go there and my mentor comes and talk to me in this astral temple. But when I first created that, I was not able to get into the temple. It was really weird because it was attached to a bigger house. And I was only able to enter the hall of the bigger house, but I could not get in to my little house. I knew it was my little house, you know, my studio. So um, the teacher had to do a lot of trials until I was able to split both. And I understood that the bigger house was actually the hospital and the small house was my little astral temple that I created for me to work, okay? And then the egregore that works in the astral hospital, the name of the egregore that I work with is Hospital Amor e Caridade. So Hospital Love and Charity, okay, is the name of the astral hospital that I work with. So the egregore presented to me so I could see people in white dressing and they, they were there for me. Okay, um, and then when I started doing Reiki, every time I got a client, I started doing Reiki and I would see myself and the client inside a room, a different room that I was like, where am I, you know? So one day I decided to finish the Reiki, I let go the energy of the person and I said, you know what, I'm going to stay here in this room. This is in my projection, okay? And I started to wandering around. So there was a door and I went through the door and I saw a big long corridor, just like we will see in, in hospitals, right? And I, was st I started walking there and a nurse came and said, hey, hey, Fabi, you cannot be there. Don't go there. Where do you want to go? And I said, I'm sorry, who are you? And then she gave me her name and she said, I am a nurse here. I work with you. I am part of your team. And if you want to go around here, ask for my help. So she showed me the hall 
that I already knew. She showed me the garden, she showed me another space and the, this room that I work and I could not go to other places because she said that in the astral hospital there is a denser energy, a material energy because in incarnated people can also go there. But in other stages, the energy is lighter, the frequency is higher, so it's, it's not compatible with us and you feel dizzy, right? I will explain a little bit more because I've been there as well. So this was um, like this nurse and me, we develop a communication, okay? And sometimes she comes through to me. And one day she came through to me during a meditation and she said, you know what, Fabi, why don't you go to the astral hospital and do Reiki there to a person that is there, disincarnated, a soul that is there? And I said, am I allowed to do that? And she said, yes, of course, we want help. And I did that that night, okay? So I went up to the astral realm and the nurse was there with me and she showed me a ward. And there was um, a lady and she there was a bed here and then there was a chair and some curtains and she was standing in front of the chair and she was facing the wall. And I was, hi, how are you? I am here to help you. I'm going to do Reiki. And she said, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I started doing Reiki in this soul, okay? And she was very confused. And I ended up saying, I, I was trying to talk to her and make her understand that she crossed over, that she was in a hospital that we were trying to help. But in the moment that I said, you, uh, I, I'm sorry to say, but you have passed away, she went nuts. <laughs> she really went nuts. And the nurse came and she said, Fabi, you cannot do that. And I said, oh my God, I'm sorry. And she brought me back like, it, it was like a millisecond. She, I was back to my body, you know, and she said, I cannot do that. You cannot tell people that they passed away, you know, because for some people it it, it is a, an impact that they cannot take. So you have to allow the mentors to do that in their own time, you know. So don't do that, please. If you see a, a spirit, don't tell them that they passed away, okay? So that was a very funny experience. And uh, um, the nurse told me, I know that you have a group because I'm a Reiki master and I have a group of people that are masters as well. And um, we, we chat a lot. So she said, if you want, you can tell someone from your group to, to go there and do Reiki as well. And I did, and it was really nice, the feedback from them. And one of the girls, she said, I went there to do the Reiki, but I actually got a treatment because she had um, recently done a surgery. So she said that she had the best night's sleep ever and that she felt really great the next morning. So she got names from from people that work there as well so it's a validation to me that like i'm not crazy you know so i i do my stuff in mental projection i don't like doing astral projection that much and the difference is that my astral body is still here when you do astral body your astral body goes and you are just linked by the platinum cord i would say and um, so you are linked to the cord, but your astral body is there. I don't like that. And for me, it's easier if I just do a mental project, uh, sorry, a mental projection. So I am there in my astral uh, temple in a deep state of meditation. And I have a mental screen and I go to where I want to go. So it's like part of my consciousness is in another place. So I have a B location. I have two scenes going in my head. 
I see myself meditating and I see myself in the place that I want to go. It, it's weird. I don't know how to explain, but that's how it works for me. And I think it's better than astral projection. Works better for me at least. So that's how I talk to my mentors. That's how I go to the astral hospitals. Okay. And that was my experience. So from the book, I also learned a few things that in the very first stage, you can go to the astral realm and you have the temples, as I said, you have the uh, sports, you have the, the nature to walk with your mentor. And um, a lot of people that are incarnated go there as well to get help and get treatment. But you see, when you go to sleep, you have, um, you are going to go where your mind is, where your energy is, okay? So maybe you are assessing some part of the astral city, but if you think in your head that you have a, a discussion with your mother, with your partner, whatever, you will bring, if you're too worried about this, you will bring that when you are sleeping to, um, to the astral city as well. You know, so you can see people there fighting to other people, uh, fighting, I mean, talking and, you know, having an argument and not really fighting. Um, so having an argument and things like this, because they are too attached to their minds, to the problems. So if you want to do astral projection, if you want to do a mental projection, my advice to you is, how was your day? How was your energy? Are you worried about something? Because that thing, when you leave your body, especially for astral projection, when you leave your body, that things that are in your mind will come to you, okay? And you can be um, not doing what you were supposed to do, okay? You are going over your day or going over um, the problems that you have instead of actually having a very nice experience with your mentors, you know, because you're busy with other stuff. So take care of your energy. Take care of yourself first before trying to go to meditation, to projections and stuff like that, okay? Now, the second stage that is also very nice in the astral cities are after you've been in the hospital for some time, you you can go when your soul, soul is calmer, when you understand that you passed away and understand that now you have to reassess your life and understand if there is anything that you want to express, get in contact with your higher self, you go to the second stage, okay? The second stage is where people have an open discussion. Just like we have here, um, a circle of people like in a rehab center you have people that share their experiences that talk about their lives so you have this kind of stuff in the second stage of the astral city as well okay because they want to understand what happened in their life did they achieve it what they wanted to achieve they try to find the contact with their higher self, with their monad again, and see if they need to reincarnate again, if they need to express something that was missing, that you were supposed to express, but you didn't, okay? So that is another stage, that is the second stage of the Astro City. Now, in this, no, I'm not sure if it was in this book, but this medium, Halu Gamash, she, uh, brought a report, I would say, that she she went down to the middle astral realm and she said that there was a man that passed away in a tragic accident. And this guy, the mentor, convinced him to go up to the astral cities, to the astral hospital. But the funny thing is, this soul is stayed in the hospital in here, in the physical world. He stayed in the hospital for two years before he allowed the mentor to take him up. And 
nobody could listen to him, nobody could see him because he was a soul now, okay? And he went to his family, he went to, he went to the hospital and he was there for two years trapped in this. And when the mentor came, this guy said, oh my God, finally somebody can hear me. And the mentor said, yes, of course I can hear you. I want to help you. Do you want to come with me? And the guy accepted the help because it was the only person that could help him, that could hear and talk to him. So um, the mentor took him to the upper astral realm, to the astral hospital. And the guy was obsessed still with why he died. He didn't understand that he died and all this kind of thing, why their family wouldn't talk to him. So even in the upper astral realm, in the hospital, he tried to leave the hospital and the mentor said, it's your decision. If you want to go, you can go. And this so apparently went down again and it took him a few more uh, time for him to go back up and accept the help. Another funny case is that this medium went to to some place in her astral projections that she saw someone in a graveyard, in a cemetery, that was just lying where his body was because he didn't believe it. He didn't believe anything. He believed it that you die and that's it. So his soul, because of his belief, was there for a thousand years just lying in with in his body, okay? Doing nothing, absolutely nothing. Was just there lying on top of his body because he didn't believe there was anything else. And the mentor tried really, really hard to talk to him. And eventually he listened and he said, hey, there is life even after death. You have to come now. And this guy was up in the astral hospital as well, okay? So this is, um, is some of the few stories that I know and my own experience. I hope you like this video. And I will talk about this book and the other stages that this medium goes uh, in the astral cities because it's really, really nice what she talks about and the, oh my God, I didn't talk about something very, very special that happened to me. So I had a surgery planned, a laparoscopy, okay? And I was freaking out. I was really, really scared about this surgery because I had a lot of problem giving birth to my son and you know, I was scared. And in the day that I was going to have the surgery done, I decided to wake up early and go to meet my mentors in my astral temple. And um, it was really different because my spiritual guide came and she took me to the astral hospital. And she was never in the astral hospital and she said, I, I have never been here. And she guided me to the nurse that works with me in the astral hospital. So both the nurse and my guide brought me to, uh, to the hall. I was okay in the hall. And then she, they brought me to a different room. I started panicking. I because of the difference of the energy, as I told you, um, I felt so bad. I, I, I was, I could not see. My vision was blurry with a lot of smoke and my guide grabbed my hand. She never touched me. She never came close to me like that. So it was really, really touching, you know? So um, I started crying. And then the nurse came and gave me a hug and she calmed me down and she did some exercises with me so I could center myself again. And she said, 
you have to lay down now okay so i i lay down on the bed and a doctor came and he said hi i am the doctor that is assigned to you today i know you have the surgery and i need to do some cleansing in you before the surgery because i need the doctor to find what he needs to find okay the laparoscopy is a camera that goes into your belly button okay if you don't know so it, it it's like an investigation so he needed to find something um uh, and i felt uh, his movements in my belly and my tummy area and then he finished and he said i will be there in the hospital with the doctor doing their surgery i will be there don't worry everything is going to be okay and the surgery was a success everything was fine and um, this was really really nice experience to me because i had never been to a different room to a different stage uh, to where i normally go in the hospital so i the things that this medium talks about in this book i have experienced them so yeah i really recommend if you speak portuguese and if you don't wait because i think she's going to translate okay i hope this video um helped you somehow okay and that's it i hope you have enjoyed goodbye